Hey, what's up guys, it's Foster, and I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to replace the top mount intercooler on your 2022 Plus WRX. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give you cooler charge air temps, which means more horsepower, and best of all, it's a super easy installation. So let's talk a little bit about why you should upgrade your top mount intercooler. Well, I've been seeing a lot of videos online with the stock FA24 intercooler heat soaking on the dyno. And besides that, if you want to have more performance or if you want to upgrade your turbo or anything like that, you're going to want a better intercooler than the one that comes on these cars. So really there's two options for you. You can run a front mount intercooler or you can go with a top mount intercooler. And the reason why I think you should choose a top mount intercooler if you've got a street car is because it's going to give you better transient response, which is when you're on and off the throttle mid corner, you get slightly better boost response. And so I think this is the better way to go unless you're going for super high horsepower, which is why I'm really excited to have this new Cobb top mount intercooler available because they make really high quality products and I know it's gonna be a great upgrade. The downside of staying with a top mount intercooler is due to its location in the engine bay, you are gonna get a little bit of heat soak and you're also gonna be a little bit limited with size. There's only so much room you can really cram one of those in the engine bay. If you go to a front mount intercooler, you got a lot more space to put a larger intercooler and you're also gonna get a lot cooler, fresher air due to its location being in the front of the car. The last thing we gotta do to get the stock top mount out of here is undo the seven millimeter bolt down here and then remove the hose clamp and we should be good to go. For this hose clamp, you just pry underneath this metal ring here and lift up and it should pop loose, just like that. All right, so everything's loose, so we should be able to wiggle the top mount intercooler out of here. So you can see a quick side-by-side -side comparison. The Cobb top mount's definitely about a full inch thicker than the stock top mount. And so that's why it's got so much better cooling capacity and why it's more resistant to heat soak. So now I'm gonna transfer over this charge pipe to our Cobb top mount. And there's a couple other things we gotta transfer over and then we should be good. So we're gonna need to reuse this O-ring. So I've got a little pick tool here and we can pick it out of the stock top mount and transfer it over to our new one. The last thing I'm gonna transfer over are these rubber grommets. There's one on each side. Make sure your gasket's clean. There's no dirt or debris or anything on it. And then you can install the charge pipe to your new top mount. Not gonna lie, one thing I've never liked about the stock top mount on these cars is the way that this coupler is all pinched with this metal band. I don't know, it just doesn't look right to me. So I'm glad that Cobb provides a new silicone coupler for this installation. So I'm gonna replace this one and it's gonna be looking so much better. So make sure this top hose clamp is loosened as well and then you should be able to wiggle it off. So now it's time to put the Cobb top mount intercooler back into the car. I have noticed it's a little bit heavier than the stock top mount intercooler, but I do think it's gonna be worth it for the increase in performance. With everything loosely in place, we're ready to tighten down the clamp on the charge pipe. Once you get it where you want it, you can move this metal ring right behind that plastic collar and it should snap into place just like that. Now we can tighten down the hardware that connects the throttle body to the intercooler. Make sure that it's fully seated and then once it's where you want it, you can start your hardware by hand and then tighten it down with a ratchet. Next, I'm gonna install this Cobb air splitter, but to do that, I'm actually gonna remove this whole plastic piece here. I'm gonna take it off the car and then I'm gonna switch this rubber ducting out for our new Cobb one. The next goal is to remove this soft rubber portion of the ducting. So to do that, you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna see that there are these plastic rivets. Use an eighth inch drill bit to drill through the center of the plastic rivets. Obviously, you're gonna break them while doing this. Don't worry about that because Cobb provides new hardware. 
I'm not gonna lie, it took a little bit of time to drill out all these plastic rivets, but I finally got it done, and now we're ready to install our new cob shroud splitter, whatever you wanna call it. So you can remove this OEM rubber one and install your new one. So in the last scene, I had this new cob shroud going over top of this plastic here. I did realize that that was incorrect. It actually needs to go underneath of the plastic here. And that's so that when you flip it over, you're gonna make marks where your holes line up and you're actually gonna drill holes in those locations. And then I'm also gonna use this Sharpie to mark at the lowest point of this fold right here. And after I remove the shroud, I'm gonna draw a straight line and that's gonna be where we cut. I removed the cob shroud. Now we can make a straight line from the marks that we made. Grab anything that's straight. Since we're moving shops, I've got a piece of flooring. Uh, normally you can use a ruler for this and use a Sharpie to make a straight line. And that's gonna show you where to cut. Go ahead and drill those holes. I'm gonna start with an eighth inch drill bit. And then after I've got the pilot hole in place, I'm gonna step up to a quarter inch drill bit. And that should be big enough for our new hardware. I'm gonna use a Dremel to cut along this line. Obviously, if you start a little underneath of it, you can work your way up to the line to make sure that you don't overcut. So this is the new hardware that Cobb provides, and the Allen bolt and the plastic washer go on one side, and then the steel washer and then the locking nut go on the other. Before we do the final installation of the Cobb thrust tunnel, you gotta install your weather stripping use this thicker weather stripping and run it along the edges so that everything is airtight. And this is how it turned out with all the weather stripping installed. So I've got all the hardware installed on this cob shroud. Now we can install it back on the hood. Well, there you have it. We've got the new Cobb top mount intercooler installed on our WRX and it looks fantastic. But not only does it look good, it's also gonna give us some more horsepower. I'm not exactly sure how much we're gonna be taking our WRX to the dyno soon and doing some testing to seeing what sort of gains you can get out of this. But the nice part is, is you don't actually have to tune for it. Cobb says you can run the stock tune or you can run their off the shelf stage one tune. So that's nice that you can just bolt this part on and go. If you guys do have any questions about the install, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. And if you wanna pick one of these up, I'll make sure to put a link in the description. With that said, I'll see you guys next time.